are here with Peter Paris and Sparrow Rogers, and they are with the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Run LLC, and they are the event coordinators. So I don't know if that's an appropriate term or not. Organizers, coordinators. Appro yeah, event organizers of the 10K across the bay, and it's an inaugural event on November 9th. Are you excited? Incredibly excited. Not yep. too many days away. I didn't even no. count. Do you know? Are you About on a countdown? Our website actually has a countdown. You can you can see it by the minute and the okay. second up to the starting time. So That's go to bridgerace.com for the exact time. It's roughly time. 90 days out. It's roughly 90 days out. Okay. Um, can you share with us some of your background um, and what brought you to this point? A race across the Bay Bridge. That's huge. Sure. Peter, you want to start? Uh, yeah, my background is uh, primarily in the real estate business. Several years ago, I started running about four years ago. I, I got into running because of my wife. She's an avid distance runner. And subsequent to that, we decided to start the St. Michael's Running Festival. And in its third year, we had over 3,500 people attend. And one thing led to another in Sparrow, and I decided we wanted to do something a little bit larger and more regionally. And of course, we have uh, the Boston connection with the racetrack mm -hmm. from the Boston Marathon. So right. long story short, ended up saying, let's try to do a run across Chesapeake Bay. And we knew that there was an event that used to be held across the Bay Bridge. Right. This event, though, is uh, different. This is a timed event. That's so correct. So do you want to address how it's different? Absolutely. So one of the things that happened with the old Bay Bridge Walk and Governor's Run is that the, uh, that event went offline for a variety of reasons, but cost was really the big driver there. And so when the state discontinued that event, which coming up this November will be eight years mm -hmm. since that last event was held, um, we looked at this and the state, we realized there had to be a public-private partnership. And so to bring it back online, we had to come up with a new format, one that could be self-sustaining. And so we looked at what was, what was working around the nation. And timed events are very big. People love running or walking for causes. And so we put this together as a professionally timed and managed event, unlike the former walks that were much more casual in nature. Yes. Yeah. So it must have been uh, something that people were looking to do because it sold out 20,000. Sold right. out within correct. what time frame? That's right. Well, if you look at the actual days that registration was open, it's right. probably about nine days. Um, but we sp we spaced those out so that I individuals who uh, hadn't heard about the event yet would have time to learn about right. it from their friends and family. So there were actually four or 5,000 segments That's that correct, kind of went roughly. out there, opportunities yeah. to participate, right? Exactly. That's correct. And actually, the first, the first um, entries that were opened, we opened here locally, on-site, mm -hmm. in that's local right. businesses, so that everybody in, you know, in our yeah. local area that's going to bear the impact of this could register at the, at the least expensive rate and earliest. Um, so we did that, actually, if you can believe it, in July, um, over in, in the, not this last July, mm -hmm. the one in before 2013. that. Right. So 14 right. months ahead of time, people signed up for a 10K that they, right. and then thought, what in the heck are we doing? Exactly. So. And, and that was really important to us that we first opened it to regional residents first. So we had uh, yeah. retail partners from Rehoboth all the way through Annapolis and Baltimore right. and all up and down the Eastern Shore. Right. So the first 2,500 went at the lowest cost to regional people, Good. runners. So talk to me a little bit about the demographic of the runners, yeah. though. Who runs? This. Who's you know interested? what? Surprisingly, this this used to be a man's sport, and most of our you know those old grainy Olympic photographs of marathoners <laughs> were all men, but women now dominate the sport, and about sixty five percent of the runners signed up for the Bay Bridge Run are actually women, and they're about their ages range uh, primarily from thirty five to fifty five years old. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of moms, a lot of community members coming out, and they have a great time, and they make a big impact doing it. Mm -hmm. So we'll have twenty thousand runners, but how many people does each runner bring with them as support or mm, family or? Do they come together? That's a great question. Um, it, it can vary, but on average, about two people per runner mm -hmm. end up coming with that runner. Yeah. Okay. And that obviously, as you can imagine, creates great economic impact to the region. Absolutely. We have about a quarter to th somewhere between 25 and 20 percent of our runners are coming from another state, mm -hmm. actually, for this event. Mm -hmm. So that's several thousand, you know, out-of-towners mm -hmm. coming in for that weekend. So at the end, I'm sure you'll yeah. be doing an overview of your your information oh, that you're collecting and you'll absolutely. be able to put that out there and we'll be able to really quantify the, the impact absolutely. to the Absolutely. What we do know is that other major running events, even ones in Maryland, have partnered with leading universities like Towson University mm -hmm. to look at the economic development right. impact of right. running events in particular on communities. And they estimate that the average runner group spends about twelve um, one thousand two hundred and twenty two dollars per event. Wow. So uh, between hotels, hotels and meals, meals and all the right. things they do, right. Shopping, it can be a great everything. day for communities, absolutely. Yeah. That's wonderful. So logistically, um, you're, I know you're obviously planning to ensure the safety of the infrastructure, <laughs> the bridge, sure. that's obviously mandatory, sure. right. and the safety of the runners. Absolutely. And you're also conscious of those that are attending because it will impact 
essentially everybody in both jurisdictions That's on correct. that particular day, on November 9th of the day of the run. That's right. But you've been conscientious and putting a team together to look at all of those aspects. Yeah. So, Yeah, I think we're, um, we, we've been working on this for about 17 months now, and our team has looked at every angle of that. But w it occurred to me when you brought that up, Faith, that we might want to tell people where it's starting and where it's finishing just so that people have an idea of how the route has changed. Absolutely. Uh, so at this point in time, our slide says that it starts in Anne Arundel County around Northrop Grumman, mm -hmm. and then it finishes in Queen Anne's County at the Chesapeake Bay Business Park. And it does finish at the park. That's where the mm -hmm. after party is. That's, that's right. right. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's really going to be fun, too. So right. from a, a route perspective, what else would you like to add? No, I just wanted people to know that, that it does. It, we've had a lot of people ask us if it's starting at Sandy Point or if it's, you know, what's going on mm -hmm. with the route. It's really important that people know that because it's a different event, we had to stage it and end it very differently. Right. And so the starting line will not be accessible to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really important for people's individual planning okay. for race day. They can meet their friends and family at the finish line, right. but right. not at the start line. And right. so and that's because you have to manage the waves of people because that's correct. because Absolutely. it's a timed event there will be waves of runners that's correct. with your fastest runners that's starting right. first. And also, Faith, just to be honest, you asked about safety. And one of the big things that changed with Boston in the Boston Marathon bombing is that running events now had to look at security in a new way. And we had to find a place that we could actually ensure the security of all the participants in our event. Mm -hmm. And staging it at Northrop Grumman's allows us to screen them off-site, bring them in in a way that provides the least amount of traffic backup and That's impact, right. um, and still have a wonderful event, so a wonderful you and safe event. You mentioned Boston. Talk to me about... Uh, yeah. The team that you brought down that's helping us. Oh, uh, how Is long somebody do we named have? Dave involved in yeah. this? Yeah, Dave, Dave. McGillivray. <laughs> Dave McGillivray, he's the actual, he's the race director for the Boston Marathon, and he's mm -hmm. uh, he's become a very good friend of mine. He's quite an accomplished individual. As you know, he's run across the country mm -hmm. twice, 40 miles a day, 80 days, run over 100 mm -hmm. miles in 24 hours. And he runs a long way on his birthday, too. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, next, actually, next Saturday is his birthday, yes. and um, he runs his age in, in miles every year, and right. it would be in bad taste to tell you how old he's going to be, but he's going to run 60 miles <laughs> oh. on next Saturday. So not a clue as yeah. to how old he is if he runs yeah. a mile for every year of his right. life. Not that that's right. poor taste. But I think, I think to address your question specifically, Dave has brought a management team that manages several of the major events in our country, and they're arguably the best operational organizational management team for road races in the world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're on board, and they're on board for the right. duration of our agreement with, right. with Queen Anne's County and the right. state of Maryland. Well, that's wonderful. Let's look for a minute at the busy schedule because uh -huh. the race is on yeah, Sunday, that's right. and that's a good thing. Talk to us about why November and why yeah. uh, Sunday. Right, so Faith, going back to your earlier question of um, how and why did we bring back an event that had gotten pulled off mm -hmm. the Maryland state calendar? Right. One of the other impacts, other than costs, was just the fact that traffic the first weekend in May is crazy, as most mm -hmm. people know. Right. So when we looked at bringing this back online, one of the driving factors to that was traffic. We had to look for a time when it would be safe for participants to be involved in this, but traffic volumes would be at their lowest. Mm -hmm. And it just turns out we also had to find a weekend that was not a Navy game. Right. Right. We had to find uh, weekends where other major events like this were not going on, and we landed I'm at sure November I'm sure that's night. hard after a while when you start looking at the yeah. calendar because a lot of events yeah. start sure. to happen, and some of them have been around for a long time. Yeah. Sure. But, right. well, and there, I, oh, from an economic development standpoint, too, uh, you know, November is after the tourist season, so yeah, it's a perfect right. time to, you know, add a little economic it's one infusion of their to the region. Season, so that's, that's right. A good thing. That's it. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So Friday, people can pick up their race packets from that's noon right. to right. six. Yeah. Right. So this is one of the great misconceptions. Uh, running events do not start and finish in four hours. Right. They're, they are. <laughs> they're, they have a much more profound impact on the community. Mm -hmm. So our event actually will start on Friday, over at Navy Marine Corps Stadium. And runners can come over and pick up their bibs and look at all the great stuff going on at the expo. There's going to be a kids run on November 8th. Which I have a slide about that later. I want you to expand <laughs> on a little kids oh. run in a few minutes. We'll do, but that's, that's just right. part of it. And then meanwhile, all of that is taking place. We have all kinds of large charity groups and large family groups that will be eating and staying and having a wonderful time on that's the right. Eastern Shore. So right. really all weekend, it's, it's race weekend. Right. So Friday and Saturday are busy with uh, activities mm -hmm. prior to. Right. And then Sunday is actually the race. And then we start a whole, the schedule that's online yes. has from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. essentially is, it's packed into that with lots, lots going on. So shuttle departures from designated yes. locations. That's right. All the people that are running will know where they need to be, how they need to that's get correct. there. You know, it'll all be laid out so that's it'll right. operate as smoothly as possible. Mm -hmm. Short waves or start waves are every 15 minutes starting that's at correct. seven o'clock. 
That's What's correct. What's the estimated time for the first person to start and finish this? What's a, a timing? Well, of the that's race? a good question. If you're talking about the fastest person, we're looking for a 31, 32 minute finish time. Wow. But then as you that's get further back, it can take, you, ha you have some walking groups that could take up to, you know, an hour and 45 mm -hmm. minutes to two hours. Mm -hmm. The way you manage 20,000 people is you don't put 20,000 people on the bridge at once. Right. You start them in waves of 2,000. <laughs> so we like to say that it's 10 races of mm -hmm. 2,000 each. And it's all like you, you, you brought up a very impor important point. It's all shuttle transportation to the start mm -hmm. line. So there's right. satellite parking and Arundel and uh, Queen Anne's County and everybody's transported to the start and they'll start in waves. So it, right. it spaces it out yeah. and Everybody should be up and across the bridge by noon. Okay, so nine to two. Come, uh, it says, come and celebrate after the race with live music. Tell me about the live music. We're in Chesapeake Bay Business Park. We're on Ken Island in Stevensville, right. the home of PRS Guitars. Yeah. So naturally, we had a lot of pressure. If we're going to be sitting right there in front of PRS <laughs> Guitars, we've got to deliver a good party. Exactly. So we reached out to PRS, and we are thrilled that PRS has stepped up huge. They're going to be a sponsor of that finish party and PRS is sponsoring it with what they're calling a Maryland Music Showcase mm -hmm. which involves numerous artists from P under the PRS brand um, that all originate from Maryland mm -hmm. and Paul Reed Smith himself is actually going to yeah, play so play. Um, come <laughs> shop uh, the, lo the Ken Island Volunteer Fire Department is going to be selling beer and the proceeds benefit the fire department here locally. There will be um, hot food, cool beer and great music. Okay so tell the truth though this after party is not <laughs> Your traditional after party for a run, and I'm not a runner, but right. from what I understand, the, the after party <laughs> is not usually, this is an Eastern Shore party. This is an Eastern it Shore really party. Is. Absolutely, <laughs> Faith. I'm glad you said that. We get a lot of people who say, I do these runs all over the country. I just get my bagel and my bottle right. of water, and I head back to the hotel. Right. We hope not. We're in Queen Anne's County, and we want everybody to see how gorgeous it's, it is here in Queen I, Anne's County. It's Perfect. an Eastern Shore Queen Anne's County party. Is really <laughs> I think it is. so, too. Okay. Uh, if you want to run and you missed your opportunity because it's Good closed, question. there's still an opportunity there to is. participate, that's and that's correct. through your charities. That's correct. And I have your charity partners right. as being the Yellow Ribbon Fund, mm -hmm. Bosom Buddies, Team and Training, and the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. That's, that's correct. That's right. Um, so those are the four official charity partners that we chose to benefit and partner with on this event. And each of those charities has entries that you can access by contacting them directly. A lot of those programs don't even cost the individual any money whatsoever. They just ask you to raise a certain pledge amount and you get a run That's for right. free. So absolutely contact our partners. But I want uh, everybody to know that many other charities, if we have four official partners, we probably have 40 beneficiaries already. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So if you've got a charity group that you're really tied into that you really care about, ask them if they have entries. Yeah. We, we let any 501c3 reach out to us and they actually got discounted entries before we opened them to the public. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of great causes, many here right here in Queen Anne's County have entries. So reach out to the official partners and to the charities that you care about. So if you're interested in running, there's yep. still a way to get there. And you can get there right. at www www.bridgerace.com on the charity partners page right. and that has all the charity information yeah. you can contact okay. them directly and okay. sort through Perfect. it that way. All right, what comes next? I think there's this race. Oh, here we go. I'm Clear looking at your Shark Kids Run. <laughs> yeah. And I hope I don't know if oh, everybody can cool. see this, but yeah. again, you can go to bridgerace.com uh, and check this out. Talk to me about the kids race. Yeah. Oh, man, I could talk yeah. about this one yeah. all day long. It's, you tell them about the route and then I'll jump in. Well, it's it's um we're doing it Saturday at 11 o'clock, November 8th, at the Navy Marine Corps Stadium. And the interesting thing is this is the first time that the, the Navy guys have let us anyone hold an event on Navy You're Field. on the field. Yeah, so the kids are going to line huge. up. They're going to run through the, right. uh, through the alumni arch where all the oh, midshipmen cool. come in. Right. They're going to do a couple loops on the, around the field and come back out. Jumbotrons, so the kids will yeah. see their faces up on the jumbotron. On the big screen. Yeah, and it's, um, it's pretty, cool. it, we're, we're pretty excited about it because it's the first mm -hmm. time that an event like this has been allowed right. to use the Navy use grounds. The grounds. Yeah. And the kids will be really excited about oh, it. Who doesn't be. want to? I want to run on Navy. I'm going to run in the kids' run. <laughs> there's a 12-year <laughs> age limit. Right. So <laughs> there's an age limit, 12 years <laughs> or younger. That's if you okay. try to sneak sure in looking that. like this guy, we'll DQ <laughs> you. Yeah. But I'm not sure we meet that requirement. And the shark thing. So it's funny. So Clear Shark Technology stepped up early and said, we love kids. We love events like this. How can we mm -hmm. get involved? So they stepped up as the title sponsor of our kids' run. And they want to hold, they want to hold all kinds of cool things. But one of the things they're doing, <laughs> because they're a technology company, and their name is Clear Shark. Right. They want kids to come out and run in shark costume. Right. And which is just awesome. And if you've ever, if you've never seen it, I encourage you to come out and watch. So not only is it a competitive run, it'll also be judged on your costume. Absolutely. That's and oh, cool. the winner of the costume <laughs> contest.
contest wins an iPad Mini from Clear Shark. So How about that. So <laughs> it's a separate thing. Just because you don't win the race doesn't mean you can't win. Right. The Absolutely. Right. Okay. Absolutely. Well, so we want to see and, all those and, little fins out there. And right. technically, the kids run. It's more. It's a fun run. It's sure. a fun run. So right. it's not really a competitive thing because all the kids right. get out there and just have a good time. Right. It's about health and physical fitness for the little guys and girls. So. Well, that's yeah. important. That's right. Yeah. That's great. Start them early. And okay. the registration for the kids run is open now too. It is. So. Okay. Well, and for all of you know. spouses out there, the funniest thing in the world is watching your spouse run with your two-year-old. <laughs> in St. Michael's, we had a number of runners under 24 months old, which completely right. shocked us. And their parents were out there running the route with them, and it was just awesome. Right. Wow, I mean, under so 24 months old. <laughs> That's aggressive, right? Okay, so this obviously takes a lot of manpower. Talk to me about volunteers. Do you still all need right. volunteers, yeah. or what's, the, what's your effort there? We need roughly from between 800 and 1,000 volunteers for multiple responsibilities from the expo on Friday and Saturday to helping with water stations and the finish line. Right. Actually, we have a whole medical division that's about 150 skilled individuals. You know, you have a big medical setup. You talked about public right. safety and okay. ensuring the safety of the mm -hmm. runners. That's a whole comprehensive plan that's put together with mm -hmm. medical tenting at the finish and some medical sta substations. So, so if you're it's a big volunteer really, group. If you're not really a runner but you still want to participate and you want to be there and you want to be a part of this, yes then you can volunteer. Absolutely. There are opp opportunities Vo to volunteer. Volunteer registration is open right now, too. Just Love. Go to the website. Yeah, and okay. anybody wants to participate. <laughs> Love the help. Great. All right. Post-race party. Let's talk a little bit more about that. We know that Paul Reed Smith is going to be there. We know there's going to be a we band. Gonna... There's food, drinks, that sort of thing. Queen Anne's County will have a hospitality yeah. tent. We're excited about that. Yeah. So we're hopeful that you know we'll have a lot of the dignitaries of the day stop by and, and join us so that we can help promote Queen Anne's County. What else is happening at the post-race party? Oh, there will be so much stuff going on, Faith. It's going to blow. I, I think people often look, equate this in their minds with a little community fun run. Okay. But there will be... Um, all kinds of corporate branding experience. Lululemon is doing a come out and rock out with Lululemon. I said, how are you going to do that with Paul Reed Smith playing right next to you? They've created a, a an entire section where you walk in and you have to put their headphones in to be able to listen to their Lululemon experience. Okay. So from large brands all the way over to people doing, um, we have pro shuckers coming out to do fresh oysters for mm -hmm. all of our participants. Yeah. Um, and the Ma Maryland bounce Watermans houses. Association. Right. Yeah, right. the Maryland Watermen's Association. Right. So from kids bounce houses and face painting all the way up to the Michelob Ultra Dome where you can come <laughs> and chill out. All those carbs that you feel like you deserve after the race, Actually, come on out and just... Good. Enjoy, relax, and imbibe. Oh, that's wonderful. It's all for a great cause. Okay, so for more information, <laughs> one more time, where do we go? Bridgerace.com. www.bridgerace.com. Okay, right. Peter and Sparrow, thank you for being with me <laughs> oh, today. Thank you, Faith, for we'll having us. We'll be doing this again before the race, and then Absolutely. we'll have a follow-up one after the race great. so we can tell everybody how the first one went <laughs> and that we're looking forward to it for two more years and hopefully years to come after that. That's right. Great. That's all the right. plan. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much for coming.